the forest sector can make a big difference in helping to reverse the situation. Our contribution to climate change mitigation through forest management can come about in three main ways. By conserving and managing existing forests, we can protect and maintain the carbon already locked up in them. If we tackle the causes of deforestation, we can reduce the rate and amount of loss of forest cover. Of course, this also protects the ecosystem services that forests provide. And by planting new forests and re-establishing those we have lost, we can restore the planet's forest cover. Schemes that encourage individuals, businesses and others to offset their emissions by planting trees can be valuable but must enact just as a salve to our environmental conscience. Where offsetting can be valuable is when emissions can't be avoided. People and companies need to know that that money will bring real benefits, real cuts in emissions that actually make a difference. So we need agreed standards to provide that reassurance. Another thing we can do is use more wood in our everyday lives. Wood is a source of bioenergy which can replace fossil fuels and avoid their emissions. Burning wood also releases CO2. However, if new trees are grown, they take up CO2, thus neutralizing the earlier emissions. In developing countries, wood, usually in the form of fuel wood or charcoal, is the most important source of energy for 2 billion people. These are mostly poor people who have no access to other energy sources. Understandably, there is great interest in producing liquid biofuels in developing countries, but if this means destroying forests, then it does more harm than good. Sustainable biofuel production can also give jobs and income to poor families. With governments committing to fossil fuel alternatives, the use of biomass for electricity generation is forecast to triple between now and 2030. There are also great opportunities for small-scale wood-based heating schemes in areas currently dependent on fossil fuels, such as oil and coal. Wood is also a raw material. Producing wood takes less energy and emits less greenhouse gas than producing any other commonly used building material. And the wood stores carbon as long as the building or furniture remains. Replacing one cubic meter of concrete or red brick with the same volume of timber can save around one ton of carbon dioxide. Designing future buildings to use more wood instead of concrete, plastic and steel could result in a significant drop in greenhouse gas emissions. Wood products are unique. They come from a natural, renewable, sustainable resource. The carbon they contain remains stored for the duration of the product's lifetime until it decays or is burnt. A global increase in the use of industrial wood products would help reduce the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere. While we can take measures now to curb the greenhouse gas emissions, the benefits of this won't be apparent for some time. Changes to our climate over the next 30 to 40 years, caused by past emissions, are largely inevitable. Scientists predict more frequent heat waves in some areas, in others, heavier rainfall. More tropical cyclones are expected and also more severe storms. The sea level will rise. Many glaciers will melt. Many plant and animal species are expected to go extinct. Many others will move into new areas, for example, shifting towards the poles or higher elevations. These changes will influence forests in all regions. For example, in Africa, lower rainfall is expected to decrease forest productivity and increase the area of dryland forests. In Latin America, the forest of the eastern Amazon is expected to be replaced by savanna. 
In North America and Northern Europe, higher temperatures may make forests more productive and alter the ranges of some species. To take one example, this map shows the predicted change in suitable sites for oak woodland in the United Kingdom under a high emission scenario. It is quite a dramatic shift. Changes will vary though from one region to another. Scotland, Northern England and much of Wales could see increased tree growth because of rising CO2 levels, a longer growing season and generally warmer climate. Whereas in other areas of England, more summer droughts could lead to a decrease in the growth rates of many tree species. Trees under stress are also more susceptible to harmful insect pests and diseases. Recent outbreaks of insect pests, especially in temperate regions, have been linked to alterations in their fertility and mortality related to climate change. The health and character of forests is changing around the world. We need to adapt and plan ahead for these changes. We need to manage forests and woodlands to cope and help us cope with the new climate, ensuring they contribute to flood prevention, develop habitat networks and create wildlife corridors. When we plant forests, we need to give careful consideration to species choice, particularly where timber production is important. Above all, we need to understand how climate change will affect vulnerable people and how forest and tree management can help them adapt. Achieving the transition from deforestation to forest conservation and management is a huge challenge. Forests need to be managed sustainably. Action to protect forests can be complemented by action to increase the uptake of CO2 in trees and soils. And some of these actions can also 